Dossie. I'm not a dead Dossie. I ducked the spider. Dossie and me, Dossie. Where's this one? Dossie and me, Dossie. Yeah. Lettuce. What? Lettuce. Yeah, it is. And. Dill. Uh, what? Dill. Dill. Where are the uh, pickles? What are these? These. Asparagus. Asparagus. And what are these? Lettuce. Seeds. Seeds. Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. Hope everybody is having a great long weekend. Happy Canada Day to, uh, to those north of the border. Happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day for those south of the border. We've actually had great weather for, uh, for our long weekend, so that's always a bonus. It's been a couple weeks uh, since we did a, uh, a tour of the garden. It's not intentional. We, uh, I did film uh, a little bit of work that we did last weekend, just uh, never got around to finishing everything up and putting it together in a, uh, in a video. And then the weekend before that, I was getting, uh, it was quite a condensed tour because I was getting eaten alive by the mosquitoes. They are still pretty bad, um, getting, getting a little bit better as, uh, as the summer progresses, but uh, yeah, hopefully today I can give you a more uh, complete tour because these plants look dramatically different in the span of uh, of two weeks.
polar bear. Yeah. And uh, I, look how much I got, Mom. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. I want a blue belly. John, don't pick the blue one. Pick the, want, pick the blue one. Actually, there's some here. Hey, there's lots of them. Yeah, there's oh, lots of them. Oh, that's a cute one. Yeah, it's a cute one. Okay. That's a bit the blue ones. Yeah. Put them in my button, Mom. Put them in my button. Mm hmm. Let me. Uh, blue Is belly. it okay if I pick some? Blue belly boy. <sighs> Maybe. I won't get the demon. I won't get the. Okay. Oh, I see one there. Oh, look how much. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know how much there are. I thought there's some. How much are, are they? I didn't know I how found two. So what? I found two blueberries. Now by this point, the plants have been outside for about a month, just under a month, and it's really just about maintenance now. We just got to keep everything, uh, keep everything up. It's not much, even with a garden, you know, this size, it's still quite manageable. It really just involves weeding the uh, the beds that don't have any weed guard down. The ones that do, for example, the uh, the cabbage and the broccoli bed, we haven't opened that uh, that bug netting since we since we put them in the ground. The weed guard is very effective at suppressing the weeds. The bug netting still allows rain and uh, and us to water from outside, so it's really good. We don't have to open them up. Every time we open them up, uh, bugs will get in. There's a chance that bugs will get in and just wreak havoc with. Uh, with whatever you're trying to grow. So, weeding, occasionally weeding, and we were looking back, it does look like, for whatever reason, uh, the plants this year are really behind schedule, so we've been adding a little bit of liquid fertilizer to, uh, uh, to our weekly schedule. Not much, you know, just a light, uh, very light fertilizer. I'm always kinda worried about, uh, about overdoing it, so, usually half strength on the uh, the fertilizer and the plants do seem to well they obviously respond to to fertilizer and hopefully they can catch up uh, by the end of the year all right so last weekend we did do some weeding nothing too uh, too exciting just weeded the beets and the carrots the onions and and beans still need quite a bit of uh, of work there's quite a, a stark difference between the uh, the beds with and without the weed guard I also did transplant or uh, or put in the ground the uh, the strawberry runners that I had rooted in the the little uh, the little pots they were uh, they were there for a couple weeks and developed some really strong uh, roots so we'll take a look at that real quick okay so this plant has been I can't remember, a couple weeks in, uh, in this little pot. If you look underneath, you see that he's got roots coming out the bottom. And there you have it, a nice little strawberry runner. Looks pretty healthy. Let's clear out some of the weeds. And so we have a spot right here open. See what we got. So, <laughs> probably could have transplanted him out last weekend. He's got lots of roots and uh, will make for nice, strong, healthy plant. Get him in the ground, a little bit of water. And he will be very, very happy. We have another one here, which will probably, same thing. Lots of new roots. Very, very healthy plants. And just put them in another, another spot. Get rid of the weeds. And give him some water. Mm -hmm. 
and that's it. Now we do have a few more runners, so I'll probably get this one rooted. It already has little root buds on it started, so that'll be a good one. There's one right here that'll go in, and I think I'm going to grab a couple more pots because I've got lots of runners here. All right, let's get these new runners rooted so we can we can transplant them. Nothing special, just soil from the beds. Now I usually use the runner that's at the first node of the plant. I'll snip the other ones off. These ones will take a long time to develop as opposed to this one. This one will root probably by next week. Um, and you really don't have to wait long to, uh, to transplant uh, the runners. So, oops, knock that one out. And there'll be a lot of first nodes coming. So this one will, will very quickly grow to a, a, nice, a nice plant. Same with this one here. So even though we're only going to plant out three today, by right, next weekend we'll probably be able to to do a whole bunch more. And today we'll check on the progress of those runners. It's been about a week. We'll see uh, if they've started to develop some roots. If they have, we'll put them into the uh, the open spots in the bed and eventually fill up the uh, <laughs> fill up the whole uh, the whole bed with uh, with strawberry plants. So not too much work to uh, to do today. So let's get started. Mm hmm Need more water? Wait. Where did it die? Oh, it's like, is that Lightning McQueen? That is Lightning like, this? I don't know who that guy is. I'm not sure who that guy is. Mm, I think that. That looks like... Mater? Looks like Mater. It is Mater. Yeah. See? I see strawberry coming up. Yeah. Is some... it red yet? Oh no, it has to turn red. Oh. Yeah. It has to turn red. See, look, new strawberry plant. <laughs> okay, so here's our strawberry bed. It's a work in progress, as you can see, but that's okay. Apologize for my neighbor cutting the. Uh, Cutting his lawn in the background, not sure, you can probably hear it. Now we haven't opened this bed up at all. We have kale and Swiss char and lettuce down at the other end. They're pretty susceptible to insects, so we keep this one covered as much as possible. Strawberries are susceptible to birds when the berries develop and deer at every other time. We've had deer take a plant all the way down to the, the crown which is, uh, it's a little disheartening at, uh, at times, but again, we're working on populating all the, uh, the spots in this, uh, in the weed guard. Last week we transplanted some runners into the ground and put a few more in pots. Um, now we don't, I don't see any roots poking out the bottom. However, I am still, we're going to do a quick check. If they are developing roots, we're going to put them in the ground and get a, uh, a new set growing. There's a lot more weeds in this bed. I find that the strawberry plants, you know, they don't really shade the ground as much. So in and around the, um, the plant itself, you do get a bit of weeds that we're going to go through and take, uh, and take those out. And while we're in here weeding, we'll weed the rest of the, uh, the, uh, the unwanted plants along the the edge but we're gonna root around in here and see uh, and see what we can find so there's that one there uh, and it looks like well that one didn't uh, that one didn't take root uh, so we will we'll root some more plants okay so we're gonna see how if we can see any root develop and you can see there's 
Hang on a second, let me separate this from the... I can see some roots forming, so I'm going to snip it from the main plant. You can see the roots just starting to to form. It does take a couple weeks, so if you're if you want to be extra sure that your strawberry plant's going to take hold, give it a couple weeks in uh, in the pot. So I'm going to get this one into a spot here, and then we will get some more of the runners in the pots. All right, so starting at one end of the garden, cherry plants still being attacked by bugs. Not as bad as previous years. If you look back a little bit later last year, this whole plant had been, it was so bad that it basically was stripped it dropped all its leaves at least this year it's putting on quite a bit of new growth it's still suffering from uh, from insect damage I really don't like spraying for uh, for insects and to be fair I'll probably just uh, let it go this this year because I don't think you know doing it is going to uh, it's going to make any meaningful change in its growing cycle. The, the second plant has put on a ton of new growth, uh, but still being adversely affected by, by bugs. You can see them there. So if you're growing these cherry plants, you are, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to uh, spray or do do something to discourage the insects. We do have a few cherries on. I just saw one the other day. There's a few down there. You can see this plant is, you know, quite a uh, quite a thick stem on uh, on the base. Um, quite a uh, quite a difference. In growth with uh, with the neighbor but I think it's catching up uh, and hopefully we'll have two healthy plants slicing cucumbers down here this is probably gonna be the last year that we keep them in this bed these two plants the cherry plants are taking a lot of nutrients out of this soil and shading these plants pretty heavily now so we're gonna have to find a new location for these but doing all right just starting to vine out even though it is uh, well we are at the beginning of July that one again just never really got going never really took root and on the other side slicing cucumbers again far behind 
where we were last year, but uh, starting to vine out. So hopefully, uh, hopefully everything catches up. One plant that isn't behind from previous years are the peas. So we have snap peas and garden peas. Snap peas are already putting out tons of flowers. And the jumbo garden peas growing, <laughs> growing very well. Not behind. They, they caught up. Beans doing okay. Starting to climb up the, uh, starting to climb up the poles, but yeah, again, the things are really slow, really slow this year. So we'll see what we get. For us, it's um, you know when we're in kind of when we're behind, we just hope that September has a uh, we get a warm September. Otherwise, yeah, we'll get, uh, we will get a lot of nothing. <laughs> now the pepper plants are doing relatively well. Well for, uh, for us in, uh, in our climate. The netting for the peppers is mainly to keep the deer away on the outer edge of the garden. So we normally will keep it open on, uh, on one side. This half of the bed is the red knight. They're the bell, sweet bell peppers. Doing well. We have peppers that are quite far along on a lot of the plants. Lots of uh, lots of flowers. Lots of fruit coming. Again, if you look at these plants in warmer climates, they get they are huge. But uh, but for us, this is probably the uh, this is shaping up to be the best uh, pepper uh, pepper crop we've uh, we've ever grown up here. Next half is jalapeno. Again, doing well for uh, for us. We have our first pepper right there. <laughs> Again, small plants, but uh, but that's what we get up here. But Doing well, no frost damage this year, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we get. And the asparagus bed all finished for this year. We harvested just over eight pounds of asparagus, and we're just letting the rest of the the smaller stalks leaf out, collect energy for the root system for next year, but another great uh, great crop of asparagus. If you can grow this, uh, I encourage you to, but you do have to section it off from the rest of your garden. It will spread and uh, yeah, it'll spread very, very far. There is a an asparagus uh, stalk in our onion bed, so it does, uh, it travels quite a ways. But a great crop, and it's nice because it is the first uh, the first crop that you can harvest in the uh, in the spring. So it's always nice to have uh, an early crop to uh, for a bit of motivation. Lettuce doing well, growing quite uh, growing quite well. Normally we do these under uh, under a cover; they are susceptible to bugs. But we're just kind of filling space here, so. Uh, so we'll see how they do. The dill is looking, uh, looking good. When we planted these out, they were looking pretty rough. I didn't think they were, uh, they were gonna make it, but they pulled through, they rooted in. And now that we've started taking some, uh, some dill, they're doing really well. It's very, uh, it's odd. I've noticed with dill that as soon as you start harvesting the leaves, the plant responds by just putting out a ton of new, uh, new growth. Celery doing what it always does sit here and uh and just kind of hang out I, every year we have the same uh the same results with uh with celery they just uh yeah they don't do anything they just sit here and and grow but it is nice to to come out and take a uh 
a stalk or two here or there. It is uh, very strong. It's got a very strong flavor as opposed to the, uh, the celery that you find in the store. So one or two uh, stalks is usually enough. Carrots doing all right. I, uh, we'll see. I don't know what, uh, how well everything's going to come out this year, but we do, again, when we're, we did them in rows, the, uh, pretty sporadic, uh, germination. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what we get. And in the onion bed, everything actually doing quite well for onions. Last year was a disaster for onions, and this year we look like, uh, it's looking okay. A little bit of weeds, but that's all right. They're usually easy to easy to get rid of. And our one asparagus stalk in uh, in this bed. Like I said, they travel they travel pretty far. More lettuce and the beets looking looking pretty good. Again, with these direct sowing uh, of seeds, germination is always really uh, very inconsistent with our temperature swings. Our, our nights will drop down to 5 degrees Celsius and the seeds really don't want to get going at that temperature. Again, for these plants, the main problem for us is the deer. So we usually leave the nets, the nets open and just protect them from the deer. On the outside, melon plants starting to vine out, even though we thought they weren't going to make it. They seem to be uh, putting on a bit of new growth. They finally, oh, that one's looking a little rough. That one's got some new growth. Finally, the roots have finally taken hold and, uh, yeah, and started to grow. So it's pretty late. I don't know what we're going to get, but... Uh, yeah, we'll leave them and, and see what happens. Uh, watermelon didn't make it. Except for this one on the end, which is just now starting to put out a little bit of new growth. Not exactly sure what happened there. Squash plants. Very slow to get rolling. Just starting to, to put out some new growth and you can see some flowers beginning to form but a really slow uh, really slow start to these to these plants all right and then this bed savoy cabbage regular cabbage kind of hard to see under the net but putting on an enormous amount of new growth you can't believe what two weeks Two weeks will do to these plants. They are gigantic. Cauliflower is looking very healthy. And again, hopefully we can actually get cauliflower out of this garden. And the broccoli should be forming heads of broccoli any time now these plants do not seem to be behind <laughs> at all they really uh they really took off as soon as we uh as soon as we put them in the ground again we have not opened this bed we have never we haven't opened this uh this netting we haven't weeded anything we haven't gone into this bed at all we water through through the mesh a little bit of uh grass Random tomato plants from the uh, from the compost, but other than that, nothing too uh, nothing too bad. Nothing that we need to actually open this up and uh, and weed. I mean the the plants, the cabbage, broccoli, everything in here is far enough along that it'll shade and uh, and choke out any of the weeds that are, uh, are that are trying to grow close to it so in all odds we'll leave this bed closed up until uh until harvest time for us it's um these plants don't stand a chance 
if they are uh, grown in uh, without any kind of bug netting so uh, yeah that's how we uh, that's how we com combat the uh, the pests blueberry plants doing okay just starting to put out some some new growth some plants doing doing better than others this one on the end seems to I don't know this area of the plant always seems to be getting attacked by again insects but further down the plant seems to be doing be doing very well so I don't know I may uh, may start to uh, to prune some of these uh, some of these back we'll see what happens but at least the plant on the end it's got a lot of blueberries set ones in the uh, ones in the middle have have a few uh, few blueberries set they're usually a little bit uh, a little bit slower to uh, to produce oddly enough the, the plants on the end are a different variety than the than the three plants in the middle. They're supposed to be more of a bush type uh, blueberry, sit lower to the ground, produce lots of uh, lots of berries. These ones are supposed to be taller taller plants, but they're not really uh, not really taking off as expected. And this one um, again is. Uh, a little odd. <laughs> anyway, I'll we'll see what uh, see what we do. See how the harvest is this year for for blueberries. On the other side, zucchini and patty pans. Patty pans slow to really take off, but they're starting to uh, to produce a little bit of fruit. Again, we've had mixed mixed luck with all of our squash uh, this year. Really slow to to take root. Zucchinis are finally starting to take off as they normally do. Once they get going, they, uh, yeah, they're big, uh, big producers. <clears throat> and tomatoes are doing well despite the, uh, the attempted greenhouse. I don't think we are going to, uh, to maintain a, a greenhouse setup. It's, if you try and do things, if you try and do things piecemeal and just you know try and figure it out as you go, Mother Nature usually teaches you a lesson. And so the lesson here was gusts of 100 kilometers an hour, and uh, and that made short work of uh, well what we did. Nevertheless, the tomatoes are doing well. These are the Roma tomatoes, you know really healthy plants already producing tons of, uh, of flowers and as romas do probably going to produce tons of tomatoes which is good habanero and hot peppers doing well in here the habaneros are taking taking a bit of time but this the center plant is actually getting uh putting on quite a bit of new growth so that's that's always encouraging habaneros are hit or miss out here and the other tomatoes these are the really leggy uh, leggy tomato plants from uh, from our indoor growing so we're gonna try next year to time it a bit better we did push it back our when we started the seeds but still had quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of leggy tomato plants so all in all doing quite well I think a couple of the plants out front already have some tomatoes set, which is pretty early for uh, for us. But uh, yeah, if everything uh, if everything goes well, we should have good crop of Roma tomatoes. And here we are with the freshly weeded strawberry bed. So you can see when. Two, three, four, five, six spots that need to be filled. 
and we have four four runners in the small pots a couple weeks we will uh, put those plant those out in the weed guard and then we still have lots of runners coming so we will uh, we will definitely get this uh, all populated by the end of summer and then next couple years we'll have beds of bed of strawberries couple squash plants doing well starting to uh, to vine out and then kale Swiss char and more lettuce we will definitely be harvesting the Swiss char and kale in the next couple days all right so get this bed covered back up and then we'll take a trip down to the garden the back garden still haven't named it All right, so again, our back plot is very much an experiment. We are, the surrounding forest is, is, has a lot of groundwater. I mean, if you look at any random spot, you can see quite a bit of, uh, of groundwater just pooling there. I mean, the sun never gets anywhere near drying it up. So we were kind of, not knowing how the plants would react to being back here because the soil never really drains um, drains very well. You can see that, you know, we haven't had rain in in a long time. Let's say about four or five days. And still, you know, still puddles all over the place. Still really, still really muddy around. So we didn't want to commit too many resources back here until we uh, we knew we knew it was going to uh, it was going to work, so it's just you know some pretty inexpensive posts and deer netting to keep the deers out. And so far, everything looks okay. The plants are still alive, which is encouraging. the The plants that were in the the seventy two cell packs are taking a bit to uh, to get rolling, and that's not that unexpected squash all the squash plants really have they have quite sensitive uh root systems so you know them being in the, those 72 cell packs um it really kind of well it had an effect on their roots and, and they are taking a while to to get rolling they're not dying outright which is encouraging the you know the the damp soil um isn't having too adverse an effect on them. They are starting to put out some new growth. Now these plants we purchased from a nursery. They were, you know, in a lot, uh, lot larger pots. They're vining out. They seem to be doing very well. So I guess the lesson for this year is squash plants. We will be starting them inside in much larger pots. Several of them are actually doing quite well. I mean, this one's already starting to vine out. Um, that one there is, is pretty big. Uh, so we will be, next year we will be growing them in, you know, larger pots, which means we have to find more, uh, more grow lights and more shelving units, more ways to, uh, to grow an ever-increasing number of plants inside. These ones, plants down here were 
they were looking pretty rough to begin with so I'm actually surprised that they're they're still alive and transplanted out so well that one is doing doing very well though so all in all I I would say it's uh, it's a success back here we will see what uh, we will see what we get again it was it was just a, a test next year we will expand this if, if all goes well which it looks like it will so uh, yeah I'm pretty happy uh. all right guys there you go you're all up to date with what's happening in in our garden like I said we uh, we appear to be a bit behind schedule for uh, for a lot of the plants but who knows we might get an exceptionally warm September and uh, in which case it won't matter so that's it for uh, that's it for me I'll see you later